Hi everyone, Trey with Veris Technologies here. Today we're going to go over the UniFi controller with the USG router and um, 8 port 60 watt switches and specifically we're going to talk about IP addresses and static IP addresses and DHCP reservations. What's the difference? How do you use them differently? How do you configure them? And why would you use them? Uh, we'll jump right in and talk about it as we go. We're on a production controller here uh, with a test site where we have these three devices. We do have a, a USG 3P and two 60 watt um, 8 port switches. Um, my, I'll turn on my network configuration here for you. So I'm, my laptop's on DHCP plugged into one of the switches and you can see that we've all, all of us have uh, 100, 101 and 102 respectively and that's because here in the DHCP server area um, which is under settings and then you go to networks and the LAN this is where your scope is defined. I bumped it up to 100 just for the purposes of this video just to make it easier to see the differences of what we're doing. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is assign a static IP address to one of the switches. Now why would you want a static IP address um, versus a DHCP reservation? Let's just assume that you want the IP address to be the same for that device, whatever the reason. Um, management tools or, or access control lists or you just want to have a list somewhere else that you can SSH to whatever you want, um, whatever the reason. But you want it to be the same IP address every time. You could do it through a reservation on the DHCP server or a static IP address. In this case, by doing a static IP address, no matter what, when it comes on, it will have that IP address. You don't need a DHCP server to be up. You don't need a router to be up. It, it's just going to happen. Um, so let's program this in and then we'll talk a little bit more about that while it's provisioning. Remember, in this case, this switch is controlled by the um, controller, so that's where it gets its configuration. We've uh, clicked on the device and now we've clicked on config and we're going down to the network section. We're going to change the IP over to static and let's give it um, an IP address. This is, was from me testing earlier. I'm going to give this an address um, inside. Now let's do it outside. Let's give it a you know, random number, 83 for example. That's outside the DHCP scope. You do have to do that that way. Um, that is definitely best practice because, and we'll talk about, I got hooked up there for a second, but we'll talk about doing a reservation inside or outside the scope. A static, remember, it doesn't talk to the DHCP server, so if we had given it, for example, 150, which is inside that scope, it would come up with that, but the DHCP server could also, uh, in fact, it gives you a warning there, the DHCP server could also hand that IP address out and cause a conflict. So this is actually good. I, I haven't seen this before, um, that they are giving a warning on that. So let's give it the address and we'll go ahead, um, subnet mask matches the network, we'll assign the USG IP address both to gateway and preferred DNS server, queue that up and apply it, and now that's got a provision, so you can see it's now provisioning. While that's provisioning, why would you want to use an IP, a static IP address versus a DHCP reservation? We've already gone over that, but a DHCP reservation, which we'll do next, you might want to tell a computer or a printer uh, or a camera. You might want those to have the same IP address every time, but you don't want to have to go to those devices and you can't control that through the controller. You can control it through the DHCP server. So that's why we do it as a DHCP reservation. Okay, that provision it looks like, and look, it did get .83 that we gave it. Now again, regardless of what's going on with DHCP, that device is going to come up with .83. Um, on a side note, you know, Unify is not, it's pretty clunky when it comes to DHCP. There's no master area where I can look at all my static IPs, all my DHCP addresses, um, all my reservations. It's, it's just not there. Um, I'm hoping that they are working on that and they do consider the DHCP server in beta. So hopefully that will be coming. Okay. Let me turn on my network uh, screen again here for you. And let's give, uh, actually, no, let's turn that back off. Let's give my laptop here under the client section 
a DHCP reservation. Okay, so you click on clients and you see it under um, uh, the, uh, the, you just see it on the list. And when we go to click on configuration, it's very similar to what we did to the switch. You click on network. And now we're going to tell it to use fixed IP address. Technically, in my opinion, that should say DHCP reservation or reserved IP address, but that word reserve there, that's really specific to the DHCP server. Okay, and once you enable that, then you can choose which VLAN you want it to be a part of or which LAN you want it to be a part of if you have multiple. And, um, you know, on, on the Pro, you've got two LAN ports, so you'd be able to choose that LAN if you had that, or on the USG3, you've got that extra, the old VoIP port, that you could enable as a second LAN port, you could assign it over there as well. But here on this one, it's just the default. So let's pick something um, inside the scope. Well, 147, that would work, but let's not just because we want to be different. How about 159? Uh, that's within that scope of 100 to 254. So we're gonna save that config. And are we done? Is that it? Just like with the switch? We're not because Remember, the DHCP server is on the USG. And so all we've done is configure the DHCP server to say, give this device the same IP address every time. Okay, now that the DHCP server is provisioned on the USG, let's go back to my network configuration on my laptop. And I'm going to turn off the device or turn off the network interface. I'll give it a second there. And then let's turn it back on to DHCP. Okay, and it'll pull a new address and it should be 159. There we go. So now my laptop has a DHCP reservation on that network pulled from the DHCP server, not from the controller. And, and if I go home and plug in at home or I go to another office and plug in, I'll get a different address there. Okay, so we've covered how to give a unified device a static IP address. We've covered how to give a client device like a laptop, if you had an HP printer or something like that, that came up, it would show up here as well. We've covered how to give those uh, clients uh, DHCP reservations so they have the same IP address. Now, what if you wanted to give a unified device a DHCP reservation? Could you do that? Um, you could. Now, would you want to? Why would you want to do that? The only, there's, a, there's one advantage I'll show you, and I don't know that it's worth doing it this way, but there's one advantage. Um, and that is, if you click on all configured clients here on the top right, you will see all of the client items, all the, all the laptops, printers, whatever, all the clients that have a specific configuration applied to them. In this case, we're talking about a, a fixed IP address or a DHCP reservation. So you could have them all in one list. Again, this points to how clunky the Unify implementation of um, the DHCP server is, but you, 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 you roll the dice that you got. Okay, so how do we do that? Because it's not listed here under clients, so I can't just click on it to configure the IP address. Well, here's how. <clears throat> Go back to the Devices tab and click on the switch that you want to configure with the DHCP server and grab its MAC address right there. Now, I haven't been able to copy and paste this because it goes away, but I did make a note of it in another window here. And so what you do is you go back to Clients and you're gonna add a client, the middle button in the top there, blue one. Again, my, my mouse doesn't show up here, sorry about that. So we'll add a client and I'm gonna copy the MAC address and then I'll just paste it in here. You could give it a name if you want. Uh, I'm gonna tell it to just use the default user group and give it a fixed IP address on the LAN side. This should look similar to how we gave my laptop a DHCP reservation. And then let's give it an IP address here. Um, what was the other switch? Was it 83? I don't recall. So let's go uh, something else, 22. Uh, we won't have any uh, bumps there because I know I didn't use that. So we're gonna add that DHCP reservation. It gives us a, um, you could add more here to do it all at once. 
um, and then you submit. Okay, now if we look at the Devices tab, the USG is now provisioning again, because remember that's where the DHCP server is. We're making changes to the DHCP server, and um, so we've got to upload those changes to the um, USG. Okay, now it's provisioned, but the switch still has a 101 address. Don't forget, we didn't give it a static IP address locally. It has to request a new IP address from the DHCP server. So let's just tell it to restart. Okay, and while that's doing that, um, you'll see um, you'll see it restart here, and then come back up and provision and get an IP address. <clears throat> but let's talk about again why we're doing it this way. Um, it's because the DHCP implementation is so clunky. The the basic settings for the scope about the IP address ranges and uh, the lease time and um, uh, you can go you can even define what the IP address is of the controller which would force that down to new access points or new switches when they come onto the network those are here under the network definition but other DHCP options like DHCP options if you had a VoIP phone system where you had a local TFTP server serving up the configuration files for the phones you could code in here so that when the phones um, get their DHCP request back, they know I'm gonna go grab my configuration file from this other server. All that's in a different place here under the services. So it's, it's still a little bit clunky. Uh, I do think that they're working on it because um, they call it beta. Um, I do see lots of requests in the forums for, um, uh, for them to expand this and make it one view, make it uh, one table of all IP addresses used so that it's easier to manage. That definitely would be helpful. Okay, so there we go. It came back up, provisioned, and we have a dot twenty-two. So DHCP reservation assigned through the DHCP server. Now look, it's still not here. Why is it not showing up? Because it's a unified device. It's over under the devices tab. So what we do is we click on the all configured client devices or all click configured clients button, and there it is. There's the switch manufacturer and its fixed IP. Um, so this is where, this is the only thing I can come up with on why you would want to assign the IP addresses to unified devices through the DHCP reservation, as opposed to the simplicity of a static IP address, because you could get it all on this screen here. Okay, that's about it. Just to summarize, we uh, went over assigning static IPs to devices. We assign DHCP reservations to client uh, equipment like my laptop, and we also assigned through DHCP address uh, reservations to unified devices, specifically for the purposes of getting them on one screen so that they're all there and easy to manage. That's about it for now. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll have more Unify videos coming out soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.